Hey, welcome to Business 150, Introduction to Management. We're now in Module 3, which examines the environment of organizations and management. As you can tell from this very first title slide, we're looking at today the external environment of management. Organizations exist in an environment, and in this particular first video, we're looking at the external portion of that environment of management. What does that mean? Well, after this video, we hope that you will be able to define the term environment as it has to do with the topic of management, as well as formulate the components of the general, task, and internal environments, which should already suggest there are three aspects of the environment that we're going to be looking at. In this particular video, we look at the general and task, as well as just briefly at what composes the internal environment for management. Finally, we're going to take a hard look at the major factors in the general and task environments. And that's really what this short little video has to do with our topic as we look at the beginning of Module 3. So the way I want to start this is by considering, well, there's two environments for fish. There's two environments, right? You see the fish on the left who seems to be happy and swimming and in its natural environment thriving because it's in the water with other fish, etc., etc. As opposed to, well, you kind of get the idea. Fish don't naturally exist on ice over a small bed of lettuce unless they're going to get served up as food. Yeah, the environment matters. The environment matters a lot to all creatures, including live, living, thriving organizations. So that's sort of a blunt illustration of that here as we consider uh, some tropical fish or some fish about to become sushi, perhaps. But let's consider some actual organizations. You can see here from the photos here, a couple of logos, some things that we may be familiar with. On the far left, the Beyond Burger, a completely plant-based hamburger. There's no meat in there. And can you imagine how an organization like Beyond Meat may or may not have been successful had they tried to introduce the plant-based hamburger, let's say, oh, around, say, 1952, back when Americans were Americans, everyone ate a ton of red meat, and the whole idea of becoming a vegetarian, much less a vegan, was completely strange and alien to the American collective consciousness. Would an organization like Beyond Meat, even if scientifically they had been able to formulate the Beyond Burger back in 1952, would they have had a chance of being successful in that particular external market environment? Probably not, and I think you already know that. Or consider the organization that's represented by the middle logo, Smith & Wesson, who for decades have been manufacturers and sellers of firearms and handguns here in the United States and abroad. Well, as you may very well know, here in the United States, our sensitivity and our embrace of firearms as a part of our culture has changed significantly over the last, say, 10 to 15 years. And of course, we're very, very sensitive and aware to why in our public culture, our attitude towards owning handguns has been changed significantly because of things like school shootings and these kinds of crimes. And well, this is not a political science class, and this is certainly not a political science lecture, and therefore, this is not a pro-gun or anti-gun legislation or ownership lecture. This is simply to suggest to you, if you work for Smith & Wesson, let's say that you're in charge of marketing for Smith & Wesson, if you are not aware of the changing attitudes in our environment here in the United States, you are not gonna be able to do your job very well. I hope that makes sense, right? Again, it's not having anything to do with our collective or personal opinions about guns one way or the other. It's simply from a business perspective, the environment and culture has changed, and therefore the market opportunities for a company like Smith & Wesson have also changed because of the external environment. Finally, the illustration on the right, Netflix, of course, a company which has served up now streaming media and video to us 
especially during um, you know times that we're all shut in, perhaps because of the COVID-19 pandemic and these kinds of things, right? Imagine a firm like Netflix trying to thrive in a world before there was such a thing as persistent internet connections, before there was a, such a thing as Wi-Fi in most, if not every home in the United States. How would Netflix have done if they tried to provide streaming media in a day when the infrastructure didn't support it? Again, it's an opportunity that is only an opportunity for success, economic success in the world today because there is infrastructure and technology to support what they offer. All three of these firms and hundreds of thousands of other firms around the world directly impacted because of the environment in which we live. I hope that provides just an opening illustration for us to consider these things. So let's keep going. The textbooks will tell us that there are two broad categories of environments for us to consider when we're thinking about managing an organization. There is the external environment and there is the internal environment, which should make perfect sense, right? The external environment, everything that's outside of the company, the internal environment, everything that's inside of the company. Now, the textbook will offer a finer distinction here. When we talk about the external environment, there's two broad categories or subsets. There is the general environment, which is everything outside an organization's boundaries. And then there is the task environment, which is the specific groups and organizations that while they're outside of the company, they're directly affecting the firm. And we'll take a closer look at that in this lecture. So let's think about this for a moment. In this illustration, you can tell that you, if you're looking at it in concentric circles, right, the bullseye is the internal environment, which we'll look at a little more closely in the next video. And therefore, the outer two rings, the green ring represents the task environment. And you can see that those are all entities that are outside of the company, and yet they have direct contact with the company versus the general environment, which is the outermost ring, which represents large dimensions that affect what happens to the company and the outside marketplace. So if you think about it in terms of these concentric circles, right, the broad issues of the economic dimension or the political legal dimension or social cultural dimension, just to name three of those five elements in the general environment, they affect the company and of course, they affect the company in different ways than, for instance, customers and suppliers in the task environment. And then, of course, far differently, the uh, internal environmental factors uh, have direct import or direct effect in ways that the other two don't as well. That's sort of a way to clarify our thinking about the different aspects of the environment that affects the organization. So first of all, let's consider the general aspects of the external environment. The economic dimension. Well, we know very well that if you have any direct experience or your family has direct experience perhaps with the global economic meltdown of 2008 and 2009, then you perhaps know folks or perhaps your family was directly affected by the economic dimension during those difficult years in the global economy. Certainly, firms and organizations were directly affected by the economic uh, downturn of that decade, and some are only now beginning to recover from that. That is a dimension of economics which affects directly how organizations can thrive in the marketplace. The technological dimension, we've actually sort of nodded to that already when we consider what are the prospects for a firm like, say, Netflix or Google or Facebook or Apple based upon what technology offers in terms of opportunities and infrastructure for businesses to leverage today. The socio-cultural dimension, including changing tastes with consumers as well as changing attitudes with consumers. Consider this, we've already talked about, of course, Beyond Burger and American consumers' concern over health, but also consider this. There was a time when getting into a stranger's car as a substitute for a taxi cab would have been completely unpalatable for Americans. We wouldn't have felt that was safe. 
and yet our attitudes have quickly changed about that, haven't it? Because now we look at Ubers and Lyfts as a normal part of life in an urban setting, where decades ago, well, that's the very thing our parents warned us never to do, get in the car of a stranger, right? Changing social, cultural attitudes have directly affected business opportunities. The political legal dimension that continues to affect business managers, just in terms of, well, from a federal government perspective, who's gonna be in the White House and how friendly are they, or how friendly are they perceive, perceived to be towards business interests, as well as actual rulings that come down from not only federal, but also state and local government. All of those kinds of things will directly and indirectly affect an organization's uh, prospects, opportunities, and success. And finally, the international dimension, and that has many, many different dimensions. Uh, international and global business is a class that I also teach from time to time. And of course, the impact of global competition and global supply chain and infrastructure affects every single firm nowadays that we can think of, right? Just think about it. Even such things as a virus introduced in a country many, many, many miles away on the other side of the world directly affects supply chain and therefore the availability of products and services here in our local marketplace. We cannot help but be affected by the international dimension in the external general environment. Those are just some quick illustrations of these five dimensions of the general a portion or the general environment as a portion of the external environment. Well, let's consider an example here. Uh, we are looking here at the famous McDonald's Corporation. If you ran a McDonald's or if you worked for the McDonald's Corporation, here are some illustrations of how each of these dimensions, these five dimensions in the general environment might affect you and your work and your decision making and what you are called to do as a manager at McDonald's. You can see there the economic dimension, whether there is high unemployment or low inflation, that will affect what you do, as well as in look at the bottom there at six o'clock on this wheel, the socio-cultural dimension, demographic shifts in the number of single adults and dual income families, as well as changes in public attitude about health and nutrition. They have directly affected what McDonald's has been able to successfully introduce in the marketplace. Those are just a couple of examples here as you look at this slide. And then there are US regulatory bodies. This is in the table from your textbook, right? That depending on your company, right? Each of these regulatory bodies in the federal government will have something to say about what you are or are not able to do as a business. You look at, for instance, the last one there, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. If you are in banking, your life will be directly affected by whatever the rulings that come down from that regulatory body, as well as if you look at the very first one in the list, Consumer Product Safety Commission, if you are selling toys or pajamas or any sort of a public good, what the Consumer Product Safety Commission comes out with will have direct impact on what you are or are not able to sell here in the United States. Those are just a couple of examples there. Well, that's the general portion of the external environment. Let's consider the task environment. And those are specific groups affecting the organization through direct contact, shall we say. Groups like competitors and customers and suppliers and strategic partners and regulators. And so here again is an illustration from the McDonald's Corporation. You consider, right, you will, your decision making as a manager will be directly affected by what happens with your customers right around the two o'clock mark on this wheel, right? Individual customers as well as institutional customers. Or for instance, what Coca-Cola, your major supplier of beverages and soft drinks, what their attitude is and what their product offering is will directly affect you. And you can see how in a different way than elements in the general environment, how elements in the task environment more directly affect what your decisions and execution and strategy and policy will be as a manager working for this particular organization. So we hope that as you consider then the term environment, the things that affect us in the world, both the external and internal environment of organizations, 
as well as the general components of the general task and internal environment, and then the major factors in the general and task environment, how they affect business decisions and managerial action for organizations. We hope that's helpful as you begin to think about what is it that causes organizations to thrive? What are the elements both in the external environment and the general portion as well as the task portion that may present opportunities or threats or provide ways for you to have, be, to have economic success or things that might threaten your economic success? Those kinds of factors as you think about the all important aspects of the external environment that organizations deal with and that managers need to interact with and consider. Hope that's helpful as we kick off module three. We'll see you in the next video.